Well, praise the Lord and welcome to our Wednesday night Time in the Word, a ministry of Faith, Hope, and Love Ministries and Retreat Services International with Pastor William Woodfield. Today we will be dealing with Ephesians, the 6th chapter, and the 18th to the 21st verse. Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Pastor Woodfield coming to you on this Wednesday, May 7, 2014, welcoming you to our Wednesday night Time in the Word segment. And we are just praising the Lord again on today for the marvelous things that he is doing amongst the children of men and the things that he continuously does for us in our lives and in our world. Although things around us may be chaotic, he still is showing his great extent of his love and his mercy and his kindness towards the children of men. Today, we're going to be concluding our study in the armor of the Lord, looking at the latter verses of chapter 6, 18, and 19, and we will be closing that out today before we begin our next series as the Lord directs us. But we just want to take time to just uh, state here that we really are appreciative of all of those of you that have been reaching out to us on uh, the very social media sites that we've posted videos to and your very and many words of encouragement. And we are just appreciative of meeting people from different places from around the world and how the Lord has marvelously blessed us to be able to interact and to pray for you and to keep you lifted up in prayer uh, before the Lord. And we are just grateful and and we are just thankful and we're just looking for God to move on your behalf. This ministry is also a ministry that believes in interceding for other ministries, pastors and churches around the world, that you might experience the success in ministry that God would have you to experience. We are not a selfish ministry by any means. We're not here to promote ourselves, but we're here to promote the kingdom of Jesus Christ. And whether we're able to travel to your locale or whether we're attached or assigned to your local assembly or not, we still want to see that God's favor and his provisions are extended towards you based upon his multitude of his riches and glory. And we want your, you to be successful because we are all in the business of saving souls, not a business per se, but in God's affairs is what we're making reference to, that we're in God's affairs to do his will on the earth. And that's to bring men and women to the cross and to the resurrected Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the one that has all power and authority to be able to save, to transform, to redeem, to heal, to set free, and to set on the road towards victorious living in him. So as we stated, we're going to go into the word of the Lord in Ephesians the sixth chapter, looking at verses 18 and 19. Let us pray before we go into the word of the Lord. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ for this your day and the things that you've done. God, we are just elated about how you blessed us to be able to share your word through this venue. And God, we're praying that you continue to bless and that you send your anointing that makes teaching and preaching easy, God, and makes it profitable to the souls of all of us that hear and labor and those that are desirous to serve you in spirit and in truth. So God, we pray that you send your anointing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. By weekly on social media to hear the word of the Lord through Pastor Woodfield. Join us and be empowered by the word of the Lord unto you. Again, we're looking at Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verses 18 and 19. And let us begin our reading on today. It says, Praying always with all prayers and supplications in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. 
and verse 20, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So today we're looking at, if you could tell, we're looking at two things. We're looking at boldness in speech and we're looking primarily at prayer. And I'd never start a broadcast or even a ministry engagement or preaching or teaching without praying about it first to see what the Lord would have us to say or even when we're engaged in it to pray because sometimes we just become so accustomed to certain things and we're not doing so out of ritualism but we want God to be present, to be invoked. We want God to move upon our service and labor of love towards him because if we're not asking God to bless it or asking God to be with us, then everything that we say and do from that point forward with the absence of prayer is null and void. It's futile. But we want God's blessings to be invoked and God's blessings to be upon the words. We want God's blessings to go through the airways. We want God's word to be a blessing to change and transform the lives of people. And in the armor of the Lord, in the wearing of it, you cannot wear it unless you communicate with God. As a warrior goes into battle, there is often times on the battlefield and in the preparations for battle, there is constant communication with the commander-in-chief and the generals and the admirals and those who are positioning themselves in positions of authority to lead those charges on the battlefields to carry out orders. And it's in no difference here that we must stay in complete communications with God. And prayer is not something that's, that is filled with mysticism or, or it's a mystery, but it's a great, greater understanding of those who walk with God that you must remain in communication with God. Prayer is more or less talking to God, talking to the heavens, talking to God who exists in the heavens, who exists amongst all of creation. We're communicating to him, talking to him, finding out from him what it is that he wishes for us to carry out and how he wishes for us to live. And what he wants us to do and how he wants us to go about it. Receiving instructions, talking to him and having a dual conversation, having not a monologue, but a dialogue with God. God does speak. He does talk. And he's very clear in the instructions that he gives. So the Bible says praying always with all prayers, all types of prayers, all levels of communications. I often tell people when I pray, I'm very honest with God. I don't want to deceive God because God knows everything. He knows everything that there is to know about you, more than you know about yourself. He knows about the situations. He knows about everything that there is in life. He knows you internally, externally. He knows the very number of hairs and follicles, hair follicles on your head or on your body. He knows everything that's going on with your health. He knows everything that's going on with your spiritual growth. He knows the sins that you partake in. He knows the righteousness that you've engaged in. He knows your good deeds as well as your bad deeds. He knows your good days as well as your bad, poor days. He knows everything that there is to know about every single human being that there is on the face of the earth. And he knows how to distinguish the needs of each and every one of his people. And he knows how to do so instantaneously. So we should always pray. The Bible said that man should always pray and not faint. Not faint emotionally. Not faint spiritually. Not faint. But always stay in complete communication with God and also having the ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is speaking into your ear gate. When God speaks back, you're listening to what he has to say. 
You're putting your spirit, your soul, your mind, your body, and everything that it is about you in a particular place with God to be able to hear what it is that he's saying. And a lot of times we get frustrated in spiritual warfare as well as in our own personal lives and even in corporate style ministries and the fact that we don't pray and we seek God until God has answered. The Bible says to be still. Too often we're moving before God has given us explicit instructions on what to do and how to go about a certain thing. But we become antsy where God sometimes doesn't always respond to us immediately because he's looking for us to learn him and to learn his ways and to generate a greater level of patience on the inside of each and every one of us. He wants us to have a level of patience and perseverance. He wants us to pursue him. And there are sometimes God will delay his decisions to see what you will do. Such as in the case of Samuel and Saul. When Saul de Samuel delayed his coming and Saul became anxious. And because Saul became too anxious, Saul became presumptuous. And took upon himself what he thought was his right as a king to present the offerings before God. But Samuel, once he arrived, rebuked him because it was not Saul's place to do so as a king. God had not extended to him spiritual authority. God had extended unto him natural authority to rule a kingdom, but not to make spiritual decisions. Spiritual decisions were in God's hand as he communicated it to the man of God, Samuel, the prophet, who was the mouthpiece of God, the orator of God, who was going to give instructions what God want to be, wants to be accomplished in that battle. But because Saul took it upon himself to act as a priest, God did not grant him favor. So we must wait on God to answer us in our prayers because we are pursuing God's favor and victory in battle. Victory in battle because he gives us divine instructions on what to anticipate, what to go after, and how to pursue it. Because remember, God sits at a much superior elevated position than what we do. We are man. We are finite. He is God. He is infinite. He is all-knowing. He is omniscient. He is all-powerful. So since he is all-powerful and since he is all-knowing, he knows how best to direct our affairs in our lives. And sometimes, even in prayer, listen, there are times that God tells us to do something and it does not yield the results that we think that it should yield. But it is yielding the results that God had intended for it to yield in the first place in our lives because he wants us to learn his ways and not our ways. Sometimes our prayer life will lead us to a breaking process where God has to break some things out of us, where God has to dislodge some things out of us, and he has to bring us into a place that we become freed of certain things. But the Bible says to pray always with all prayers, all types of prayers, not just one type of prayer. In other words, don't become ritualistic in your prayer life. Just because you read in a book someone else's prayers that they've penned, that they may have prayed out of a situation in a time and a moment in their lives, and that prayer was powerful, does not mean that that prayer is going to work for you. There are some corporate prayers and there are some prayers that people have prayed that God will allow you to pray and you'll see quite a number of them throughout the course of the scripture. But there are some time God wants you to infuse your own personality into your prayer life. He wants you to come to him raw, R-A-W, raw, without holding anything back, telling him the truth of what's going on. Letting him know the pain that you're experiencing. 
Let him know the disappointment that you're experiencing. Let him know the joy that you're experiencing. Let him know the struggles that you're having in your life and others that are others that are having in their life, making supplications and intercessions for other people. Praying always. The, the thing to remember is pray, 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 pray. Talk to God. Just like I'm talking to you now. Talk to God. Sometimes I pray and ask God just to bring you into my prayer chamber for a moment. God, I'm struggling with this thing. God, this thing is not going well. God, this one is not acting correctly. God, this one is out of order. God, this one is in pain and agony. This one is in sickness and, and disease. God, move on their behalf. God, heal them in their bodies. God, remove this sickness. God, you see the trouble that they're in with their spouses. God, bring resolve to this situation. God, cause peace to come to this situation. God, I don't know which way to move in this ministry. I don't know what you're looking to come out of it, God. But God, if you lead and guide me in the path that you would have me to go in, God, then it will yield the results that you're looking for. God, I'm not anxious. God, I'm feeling anxiety. God, I'm feeling antsy. God, I feel certain things that are overcoming me. God, God, remove these things out of my path and out of my life. God, my body or your body may be in pain. That's the best time to pray and seek the face of God when you're experiencing difficulty. Not only when you're experiencing difficulty, but even when things are going well to pray. And sometimes it doesn't mean that you're praying every single moment or second of the day. But sometimes it means that you're praying even in your heart as you're going about the things that you need to accomplish during the course of the day. When you're unable to take the time and kneel before the Lord, sit before the Lord, prostrate yourself before the Lord, lay upon your face or to lay out before the Lord or to walk back and forth or to sit in solitude while you're seeking the Lord. It may be mean that you're in a room full of people crowded and it's full of chaos but God would have you in that moment to be the intercessor and the prayer warrior that brings peace to chaotic situations even in the midst of the storm God is allowing you to have peace a peace that surpasses all understanding and he says, watching thereunto with all perseverance. You and you pray, you must be watching. Stay tuned, there's more to come from the word of the Lord with Pastor Whitfield. See, when certain people pray, they stop watching. And God wants us to be a watchman on the wall. When you pray, you have to be extremely watchful. Those that are involved in the military, they have binoculars and binoculars that are of varying strength, scopes on their weapons and things that they can look out and peer out and see what's going on. God wants you to look out in the realm of the spirit. Listen to me. So that you can see by the Spirit of God, and we often talk about this, and we always stay on this point, when it comes to prayer, you must be watchful. You must be looking for the prayer to be answered. You must be looking for changes to be taken place. You must be looking for the thing that upsets the enemy as you're praying, that is dislodging him, that is causing the battle to become even far more intense what it was from the beginning because when you begin to pray your prayer begins to dislodge things and you're going to see some negative activity in the realm of the spirit as well as some positive things you're going to see things being torn down uprooted and destroyed so you can't become dismayed or discouraged when you see God beginning to answer your prayers. 
When God begins to answer your prayers, that means that the power of heaven has been released and it's upsetting the very devil and our very enemy of our soul that is frustrating him, that is tormenting him, that is bringing a level and a degree of success towards you and is stripping him of his power to prevail. And the more it strips him of his power, power to prevail, the more agitated he becomes because your prayer is covering ground that is arresting him and preventing him from having any further control or any further victory or any sustaining of things that he has once possessed. He has to remove his hands and let those things go. Because your prayers in the ears of God becomes an overwhelming, powerful weapon that he cannot contend against. And as long as he cannot contend against you, and he's losing ground, the fire and flame of darkness that he once allowed to burn brilliantly in that place begins to become snuffed out and diminishes and eventually extinguishes it. And when you, through your prayers, when God has given you the victory, every dark area that was darkened with gross darkness will now shine brilliantly with the very light and the essence of God. This is the place in your prayer where you see people begin to change. Situations that you prayed about, health will be restored. Children will be delivered and set free. Prisoners will be released from the bondages of the devil to walk in the glorious freedoms of the children of God. And then you will see that God has granted you a greater level of victory and success that no weapon and no enemy in hell could ever take out of your hands. You must be watchful, careful, diligent in your watching and always looking for God in it and always looking for God dislodging the enemy. And always watching what the enemy will do and what your, what your next prayer should be to counter him. Because what you see also will dictate your prayerfulness and what you are praying for or against and what you're seeking God to do. And asking him to do. And as God gives you instruction, he may tell you, alter or change your prayer. This is what I need you to pray and offer unto me. Listen, the Holy Ghost's existence on the inside of us once we receive him is to lead and guide us into all manner of truthfulness. Which means that part of that truthfulness and leading and guiding us is giving us the prayer that we should pray. The Bible says that man not all, does not always know what to pray for as we ought. But the Holy Spirit intercedes for us with groanings and moanings and petitions before God. That we oftentimes don't know what he's praying but. He prays in accordance with God's will for our lives. And he knows the perfectness, the perfection of God's will for all of our lives. And when he prays, you could best believe that it is thorough, it is complete, and it is answered because God is praying unto himself on your behalf. He is interceding to himself for you. The Bible said that the three are one, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit who came from the Father himself, who knows the mind and the will of God to lead and guide us into God's perfection, 
praise in a way that we will never fully understand or comprehend until we are face to face with God himself. This is watching there unto with all perseverance and supplications, not only just for yourself, but for all saints, the body of spirit-filled believers everywhere. When we are praying and interceding, we want God to move on the behalf of our brothers and sisters. We want him to move on our request and to bless them so that all over the world, universally, we can stand together regardless of our ethnicities, regardless of our a racist, regardless of our nationality or how we've been raised or trained and our varying dialects, we are all on one accord and on one page when it comes to the will and the mind of God to be able to speak and to say. And Paul goes on and says, and he says, and he makes a request for himself. And this is a request that I'm praying for every single orator of the word of God that has been called by God as well as for myself. And for me, I'm requesting because I'm teaching and giving out and pouring out into the lives of other people, Paul is saying. Because I'm a prisoner in bonds and chains for the sake of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. He said, and for me that utterance may be given unto me, that utterance that God would fill my mouth with the things that he would have me to say. That as I study his word and spend time with God, that God would fill my mouth, my spirit, and my soul with that good word to feed unto his people. Paul is saying, God, fill me with the honey of your word. Fill me with the bitterness of your word. Allow me to rebuke, reprove, chastise, revive, teach, and instruct, encourage, to motivate, to stimulate God, and even cause people to stand up and live according to the word of God. That the word that I preach would bring change, would bring deliverance, would bring healing will bring salvation, will bring continuance in the will of God, in the mind of God in serving him, that backsliders will be returned to God, that sinners will repent, those that are living in active open sin will repent and return to you. Give me words that I don't know, but spiritual words that come down from heaven, that I can speak into situations that I know of not of. Give me words that I can speak to him that it is weary, that I can cause them to recover in their season. Give me words of wisdom that I may know how to speak to him that is weary and they shall recover in their season. God, fill me with boldness that I could stand in the changing climate of our society and in our world and still boldly preach and declare Jesus Christ amongst those who are rejecting him in the household of faith, in the world, and in society at large, whether it be in my home, whether it be in my family, whether it be in my friends, whether it be in my co-workers, whether it be in the church world at large, God give me bonus that I would teach and preach the uncompromising Word of the Lord without sugarcoating, without watering it down, but standing as a watchman on the wall in the defense thereof and the proclamation thereof with all boldness and clarity of thought, mind, and of speech and not taking down and changing positions just because the political social climates of our times have changed. And though the word may seem to be antiquated as it is, the word of God said that he is God and he changeth not. And he also says that not one drop, drop or not one tittle would, other, would anywise pass from his word. The word of the Lord stands sure and it stands for all eternity. And we must not live to compromise the Spirit of God, 
the word of God, the standards of God, or the boldness in which we are to proclaim the living, breathing word of the Lord. And he goes on to say, As for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mysteries of the gospels, those things that are hidden, hidden to those that are lost, those things that are cloaked and covered and are veiled, those things that people cannot see because they have blinders on. The devil has blinded them. Because of their own way of thinking has blinded them. The society of teachings that we live in has blinded them. Philosophies of our day and past days have blinded them. Words and eloquent words of people that are great and great and wonderful orators that know how to put big words together, know how to utilize them, know how to move you emotionally. But God says... Give me boldness that I may open up my mouth and make known the mysteries of the gospel. Not with swelling words that will entice men. Not heaping unto ourselves teachers having itchy ears. But hearing and recognizing by the Spirit of God that this person has received boldness and anointing and authority to stand through their prayer life. And be a preacher of righteousness for God. And that they will never compromise the standards of God. They will be bold even unto death. They will never bow their knees to Baal. They will never worship an idol. They will never have idle time or idle words. Their lives are full of godly purpose. And the words that they're speaking, they have concluded within their soul, their mind and their spirit, that these are the words of eternal life. And whether else can we go? If we go from you, we've gone from the ark of safety. And we've gone away from the almighty God. And he goes on to say, for which I am an ambassador, I'm an, I am a representative of the kingdom of God set in a foreign alienated land to point people to Jesus Christ. And when you are at an, an ambassador and you are at an embassy, that ground, is the legal ground and the legal rights of that host, or of that, not the host nation, but of the nation in which that ambassador is representative of. So all the laws of the nation that that ambassador is representing, once you come on the grounds of that embassy, applies. Not the laws of the host nation, but the laws of the nation represented on that land and within the confines of that property. And the laws of that land are what are to be adhered to. And as they are adhered to, that's why you can step in the ground and call it and ask for political asylum. Listen, there were cities in the Old Testament that God told Moses to set up, which were called cities of refuge. That if a person committed a crime, they could run to and they would be safe until they could be properly judged. God said, run into his city. Ask for forgiveness. Ask for political asylum to come into the kingdom of Jesus Christ. And to become a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. Yes, you still may be a citizen of the country of your nationality. You may have moved to another land and have chosen to pursue citizenship there. But you can have dual citizenship with the land that you're now part of or the land that you were originated in and still have access 
dual citizenship in the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Paul said, I am an ambassador in bonds that there and I may speak boldly as I ought, regardless of whether I'm restricted or certain restrictions are being placed on me. I choose to not allow the bonds or the chains or the restrictions of men to restrict and to hinder me. Though I may be in bonds, the Apostle Paul is saying, I am still yet free because I'm still going to boldly speak and declare what God has given me. My mouth will never be gagged. My spirit man will never be restricted. And the word of God will always be the weightiest thing in our lives. This is the will of God that you pray, that you watch, that you supplicate for all your brothers and sisters, for all the saints, that you be bold in your speech and in your utterance, and that you recognize that you are an ambassador in a strange land, calling people to the kingdom of Jesus Christ and to reap its benefits for all eternity and to live in the presence of the almighty King. Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, our Redeemer, Master, and soon coming King. This is Pastor Whitfield saying thank you for joining us for our Wednesday night time in the Word. Join us again on Sunday as we lift up the name of Jesus with you. God bless you and have a wonderful remainder of your week in the Lord. Thank you for tuning in to our broadcast. We pray that the Lord has blessed you richly through His Word. Join us again on this week for another powerful word from the Lord. God bless you. Until then.